Okay, so does anybody have any questions uh, you'd like to ask Lynn? Or any feedback? Lynn? Yes. Hi, it's Hi. Kathy. Hi, it's Kathy Ann. Um, I just went to your website while we had that little in between time, and uh, I had a question as, as far as your gallery pres uh, representation. Do they take all your all the different kinds of work you do, or is it limited to one uh, aspect of your work? No, they take all all different uh, all different sizes, all different uh, you know the figurative, the cold wax. Yeah, they they have an assortment there. Mm -hmm. Great, that's good. Yeah, well, they don't often do that. I know galleries usually try to you know pigeonhole you into one, you know, like whatever they're selling most or whatever, you know. So right, just, right. Uh, they, no, with you. Okay. that hasn't been my experience with them. So um, you know, know. yeah. Yeah, good. yeah I think your site your site is great. Oh, thank you, thank you. Go ahead, Tina. Hi, thank you for this talk. There you are. Hi, Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm so impressed um, of how far you've come. You said six years you've been painting. Yes. That's a bit mind blowing uh, to me. And I'm wondering how hard do you work? How much do you work every day, say, painting and admin or everything else? Mm hmm. Like uh, I think the actual uh, painting, uh, you know, as an average would be uh, two or three hours a day. I, I try to every day. I can't. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I have a house to take care of. I have family. I, you know, so, but I, I spend uh, as much time up here as I can. It's usually, I would say, a good solid five days a week. Um, and some of it is uh, absolutely spent on you know, the miscellaneous uh, work that has to be done that, um, you know, I had no idea until I really got into painting, like just how much uh, extra work there is that has really nothing to do with um, doing the fun part. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, I do, I try to spend uh, two, two or three hours painting if I can. And then uh, I have to figure out, you know, how to fit in the other things that have to be done. And that is really, that's another thing that I have struggled with is like trying to find that balance, you know, how to, you know, be able to do all the things and still enjoy, you know, being uh, with my, my family and having other things in my life. And so I I'm working on that right now. I just, I just recently started a yoga class uh, to actually get me out of the studio and to help me, um, you know, sort of, uh, stretch my mind and, and body a little bit so um so i so i'm working on that yeah it's it can be hard so, yeah. so was that true for like i assume you feel like you had a period of learning how to paint and then so was the two to three hours a day was that true for them too or did you paint more intensively when you didn't have all the admin while you were studying and taking classes and um so when I was taking the classes, you know, my most of my painting was, well, I was certainly working uh, in my studio, but a lot of my painting was done there in the classes, you know, those initial, what I'll call my fundamental classes that year and a half, that first year and a half, you know, that was two or three times a week. So it wasn't like I was just going to that class for an hour or two. It was, you know, I think it was three hours a day, three times a week. And then I was working at home and then I was, you know, taking a class at night, you know, maybe in, in uh, drawing or whatever. So, you know, I was doing a lot of different things at the time. I, you know, I was really pushing myself pretty hard at the time to, you know, to get, to, you know, to get moving. You know, I was really anxious to do, to do the work, you know. Um, I just wanted to dig in and, and be able to really, uh, start painting. So, yeah. Okay. Awesome. I do have one more question, but I'm going to sure. let the people go first and I'll just raise my hand again for okay. the time left. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Nancy. Uh, hi. Hi, Nancy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for doing this. 
Hi, this is uh, this is really great to be able to hear uh, other artists speak. And uh, I, I just wanted to thank you for uh, saying that age is not a detriment mm -hmm. because I, I also started very, very late in my life. And I also had no, I had no art training per se. Yeah, so yeah, you you know, it's never too late. Uh, never at too all, old, actually, not in school at all. In elementary high school, yes, yes, uh, and I, um, I just wanted to say, in my case, uh, like you, I, I took a lot of uh, different workshops and that sort of forty years, forty-two years, and uh, we have a we have about a hundred and maybe about a hundred and fifty to one hundred and twenty people, uh, many of whom are pretty active and. And what's been great about that is that everybody shares and you get to try, if you're a dilettante like me, you get to try a zillion different things and it's really, really fun. So I have gone from, I was a potter for 30 years. And so, mm. and now I'm doing uh, uh, two, mostly two dimensional collage art and, and I never expected that. So it's just, you know, like you said, it, that you, 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 you know, you do it for the love of it and you, you do it for uh, for the, for the uh, experimentation and the I don't know it's been it's just been really great and I you know I'm really grateful to to be able to do it so thanks a lot it's it's a, a what a beautiful studio space you have wow thank you thank you yes I am yeah. very fortunate to have all this space and a and a spouse that doesn't mind if I if I trash it he knows I you know he recognizes I need to do this and so you know he just goes along with that and it's that's great so yeah I would say for me you know certainly art has been life-changing and you know I was I you know I've uh raised a family a 40 year old marriage you know all good things and that but this was the thing that was missing in my life that I needed and I didn't know it I you know I, I stumbled into it quite frankly you know and so um I'm so glad I did. And uh, it came all at the right time for me. Yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, I, even though I had what I'll put in quotes, real jobs, because I had to, I had to make a living. And uh, I always, and, and I always said to myself, when I, when when I retire, I'm going to do my artwork. Mm -hmm. And I had this huge fear. You talked about fear. Uh, am I just blowing smoke? Am I, am I, you know, I always thought that, oh, what a charlatan. You're just blowing smoke. You're not going to do that when you retire. But I, but I, but I am. Yeah. So yeah, you, you meant it. <laughs> so I'm, it's really exciting and I share your gratitude. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Tina. Okay, so so yeah, yeah. The the last question was uh, process, really. I was wondering how you you say you're an emotional painter, and you, um, I'm wondering how you practically go from an emotion and experience uh, topic, so to speak, uh, to the canvas. Like that might be hard to explain, but yeah, that is hard to explain, yeah. Tina, because I don't really know. <laughs> You know, okay. it's just, it's just something that happens. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I was talking to Alan the other night about, um, you know, getting ready for this presentation. And I, you know, I mentioned to him, like, um, you know, showing some of these pieces that I, I wouldn't remember necessarily what I did because, you know, oftentimes for me, it's really an, like an altered state when I'm painting. I don't remember it later. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like an out of body kind of experience and so you know uh, often I look at pieces and I think wow I did that and how did I do that and I wish I could remember uh so I could duplicate some of it in some way but it's just uh you know it's, I, I found that it's just it's just gone after you know after it happens so um so yeah I don't know um really how to explain that I just know I've just come to, to learn that it's coming from my gut, you know, and that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm purging things in a way uh, 
from my life. And some of it has actually been a little unsettling uh, that I, you know, these things that have happened during my lifetime, having, you know, experiences are coming out in the paintings that I would have not realized that I was still sort of carrying around, you know, if that makes any sense. And it's like, I see it and I think, oh, I know what that's about, or I, I know who that is. And it's just can be a little unsettling, but, um, but also at the same time, you know, it's, it's doing me, it's like I said, I, I appreciate the fact that I, I'm getting to know myself better and that I have sort of carried around some of these things and now they are coming out and it's not, it's a good thing. So it's art therapy, really. It's like, I, Mm -hmm. I feel like my paintings are my therapy. They're my therapist. They're my, they're my spiritualist. They are my companions, you know, um, they are, you know, very meaningful to me. I recognize that that flow state where you just kind of you you just go and you're not really um, thinking. It's just intuitive. But um, I don't feel like I can connect to any any particular topic. It, um, so so what yeah, saying? I I just feel I think uh, you know like in terms of what I when I mentioned like the environmental paintings or whatever you know it's not. Um, it's not that I set out to do those paintings. It's like after I do them, you know, I I can see, I I know what it's about for me. You know, I know where it came from. Whereas you might look at the painting, like, uh, you know, and think, oh, that's just a pretty painting, or that's just like I love those colors or whatever. But I see the meaning in it because it's it's the it's subject matter that I care about. You know, so so. So Linda Peter again, so uh, kind of a follow up to Tina's question, but because I experienced the same kind of thing and I go back and forth. But when you start, I, don't know, I think a lot of abstract painters, you don't start with necessarily with anything in mind. You have a blank no. canvas, make marks on it, and then you kind of look at it and, you look, and maybe sit for a week or so and then do something else. Is that how? And then no, you kind of start to see where it's going. Well, no, I mean, when I start something, I, I always start with the marks and then you know, I kind of let that lead me. Like if I, if I see something there that I want to, you know, push a little further, you know, the mark making is almost always done like in one shot, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm, and then I, you know, I may add paint, uh, and then come back in and do more marks. That's, you know, that's pretty common, but that first fundamental layer of marks, that's all done at one time. That's like, that's like getting, that's like play for me. And that's like getting the juices flowing. And that's like, you know, just throwing down something. So I get loosened up. And, and that's when sometimes, or when I see uh, the figures evolve and I think depending on, uh, I guess my mood or what they look like, um, you know, that's when I kind of decide, well, do I want to, you know, push the painting or is the painting telling me that it's going to be a figurative, you know? And so I, it's just that I just let it evolve. So yeah. does do the, do the titles, I, um, and I, I, I know how I do it, do the titles come to you later? Um, sometimes I get a title in the middle and it, it gets in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I say, oh, now I'm trying to do this. Um, but most of the time they come later and I look at it and I go, like you do, I'll say, oh, that reminds me of a desert or, right like that right. so it kind of is that the same thing kind of thing yeah no my titles never come till they're finished you know and sometimes they're untitled for a while I have to sort of live with them and see you know what how I have to think about it you know but um but but sometimes they name they they name themselves but it's always after for me it's always because I yeah. really don't you know while I'm working I, I just don't know how, what's going to happen and that's what I love about the way I work is I don't have a plan. I'm, you know, I'm a planner and everywhere else in my life, uh, I'm neat and everywhere else in my life. Um, but this is the space and the, and the place and the time that I do not, I, I don't impose rules on myself. I, um, and I may, I may be, um, you know, making it more difficult for myself by not having a plan and not, um, you know, having some, some boundaries in place, but that's, you know, 
that's why I paint, you know, that's, I don't want those things. This is where I, I can live a different kind of life. <laughs> so, um, it's interesting. yeah, that so, makes sense. Uh, I mean, it, it, it might be that, um, if you try to do something, if you try to consciously do something, it might, or you put boundaries there, you wouldn't be able to do the same thing. I mean, I, I don't I think so. You, you try to put things out there and then it just doesn't work until you just. Yeah. Say, okay. so. so for me, I think if I, um, if I plan uh, much um, for me, I feel like the painting loses something. I yeah. don't know, you know, it loses its rawness. Um, you know, if I just, if I'm just doing it and I'm not like putting a whole lot of thought into it, I feel like my paintings have more life. And it's when I start trying to uh, manipulate them too much, which I do. I mean, I've overworked a lot of paintings that I've, I mean, I've, I've just ruined by um, not figuring that out that I need to like, just leave it alone. It's, it's, it is what it is. And um, so I've, you know, I've ruined paintings that way. And I look back at some photographs that I've taken over time. And I think, oh, wow, that was really, that was a good painting. And I just, uh, I just totally killed it. And why did I, you know, why did I do that? So, but it's, you know, it's, you, I'm learning, I'm, I'm learning along the way. And I didn't know that initially. So, but yeah, I feel like my paintings are better, the less I, I plan. And, you know, even when it comes to uh, a palette, I do use a, 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 a planned palette sometimes, and I think that makes it easier, but uh, I learn more by just grabbing what's there, whatever it feels right to me. Um, I learn more about mixing color. I learn more about, um, you know, other things. So, yeah. So uh, Cecilia has her hand raised, so go ahead, Cecilia. Just think you're on mute, Sylvia. Hi. 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 Yeah, hi. I just wanted to thank you for your talk. Um oh, thank I've you. Been, I've been doing uh for the uh we I met with the Aldrich Contemporary Art Museum in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Oh, I used to live I, in Connecticut. Yeah. I used to live in Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know Ridgefield. Yeah. <laughs> so so you know, it's the only contemporary art museum, but we are doing 52 feminist artists, um, 26 from when Lucy Lepard um, show, first showed at the Aldrich in 71 and 26 emerging women artists. Mm -hmm. So it's been really interesting because I've been doing several tours a month and we rotate the artists. Well, I choose to rotate the artists and doing these deep dives into why they do what they do, what what were they trying to convey, their meanings. And I think the best art that um, the people connect to when I'm giving these tours are the ones where the artist comes from a deep dive and, and, and it's an emotional response to her environment, to what she felt she needed to say at the time. Mm -hmm. And they use whatever medium comes up. And it's, it's always so fascinating because a lot of times, like you said, they weren't really planning on a particular outcome or a particular mm -hmm. method, but it comes about by them just being in their environment and, um, having the need to express what they felt mm -hmm. conscious mm -hmm. or unconscious. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, it happens a lot with the younger artists too, it, it, amazingly. So, so wow. even the huge age difference, some of these artists were born in the forties and some of the newer artists are in the eighties, nineties, uh, using different mediums, different, um, but a lot of the newer artists that was really interesting were using older techniques like plaster that look like mm -hmm. forms and so it has an ancient feel using tapestry wool that they dye themselves but she's very young but she's using mm -hmm. an older form but they all had this need to express themselves um and so i thank you for your courage to express what you're saying and um and I love the thing about being fearless because I think that that is something that hold, I know holds me back, the mm -hmm. fear of um, 
if I'm showing at this gallery, would I, how do I compete or compare to mm -hmm. the other artists and will I be good enough or right the good enough the good enough is a big yeah. is a big one yeah I yeah. you know I I still I still uh even with the the success I've had it's still a, you know is am I good enough is that good enough and you know like I said I still feel like my best work is yet to come but I still I love that struggle. expression. <laughs> That's such I a great struggle, expression. I still struggle, though. You know, is this is this good enough? Is this painting good enough? You know, so. Um, but I I I feel like that's a. Um, that's not a bad characteristic to have. I mean, I do feel like that pushes us along, uh, to uh, can you know to keep trying to make better work. I mean, that's that's what I want to do. You know, I'm kind of. I'm kind of all in, you know, or not at all. And this is, you know, I'm all in here. So, um, so that's, you know, what I want to do so, is make better work. Anyway, but thank you for your authenticity and your honesty to open up. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so I have a question, Lynn. Um, I keep looking at the piece, I think it's all over your left shoulder with the markings. Mm -hmm. I look at it, it's like I see the uh, torso emerging from that. And so I'm kind of curious. Um, do you see the one I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm just in the small, I, I don't, so am I oh. big on your side? No, <laughs> you need to go the other way. Too. That the other way. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, so like, do, do your figure, do they kind of enter your work like that? Like you start marking and, oh my God, there's a figure emerging. I mean, I see the torso, maybe you don't. Yeah, uh, I see it, but no. So, but I'm is sorry. that how you, you, your figures kind of come in into your work or is there, or is it more conscious and intentional? Um, that one, was more conscious and intentional. So normally, no, I, you know, the others, they, they're kind of like part of the, um, the initial mark making. Mm -hmm. And so once I start to see them, you know, that's when I decide like, oh, I, should I, you know, go ahead in my head, I'm thinking, do I want to go ahead and like give this a fuller body or, you know, uh, and sometimes I'll do that and then decide that I don't, I don't like where it's going and I just cover it up and go in another direction. This one that you're referring to, that was, um, that was pretty intentional. I didn't know I could do that. Um, and so, so I left it alone <laughs> because I, uh, you know, <laughs> so I, you know, it's just on a, it's just on a can on a raw canvas. I, I didn't do anything. Uh, so, it, you know, but I feel like it stands very well on its own. So, um, I'm probably just going to leave it like that. And then another question. Um, could you just mention two or three artists who might have influenced you? And when you're painting, do you think of other artists or you just kind of block that out of your mind and just kind of focus on your own inner guidance? I don't really think of other artists. Um, um, no, I, I don't really, I mean, I ha certainly have a lot of artists I admire and I follow a lot of artists on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, and some, I don't follow, but I check in cause I, you know, want to see what kind of work they're doing, you know, cause I admire what they're doing. Um, so I, you know, I don't really, uh, think about anybody else's work when I'm working, um. There are a couple of artists that I, you know, I sort of have a personal relationship with that I feel like have influenced me in a way, in ways, and um, and I'll tell you who they are. Um, uh, Jason Craighead is uh, oh, yeah. uh, an artist yeah. that um, I I've met Jason. I actually have two of his pieces in my home, and um, you know he does a lot of mark making. Um, one of the pieces I have of his is, uh, is a larger one and it's an early piece. Um, I think it's probably 15 years or so. So he was painting a little differently at the time, um, but it has the marks and all. Uh, and then I have a more uh, recent piece of his. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, maybe subconsciously, I mean, I live with these paintings in my home. I see them every day. Uh, I would think that somehow or another, they uh, probably come into my 
my head space in some way, you know, because I do see them every day. So, so he's one um, that I feel like could, could influence my work. And I certainly like his work, obviously. And so, and then the other one is Jean Myers. Um, she is, uh, I found Jean when I first started uh, working in cold wax. I mean, she was kind of one of the artists that I thought when I initially saw her work, I thought, oh, wow, I'd like to work with this medium because her work uh, back then when she was using cold wax is just beautiful, um, very rich. And, you know, so I, I actually had the opportunity to have a men mentorship with Jean this year. And so uh, we spent two months, two and a half months together uh, chatting once a week about my art. And um, so I learned some things from her. And uh, yeah, I do feel like um, she's probably influenced my work. And so um, so I would mention her. Yeah. Is, is she on Instagram? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, <clears throat> How do you spell her name? Uh, you know what? Let me double check. Let me grab my phone here. Because I right this minute, I, I can't remember if it's with an S. So give me one second and I will, will tell you. She's not uh, using uh, the cold wax anymore, or I don't even think she's using oils right now, but she is doing um, acrylic uh, works and it, you would never know that it's not oil. It's just, it's really amazing what she's doing. Oh. So it's, it's M-Y-E-R-S, Jean, G-E-A-N-E, -E M, I'm sorry? Paul and just put her name in the chat. Okay. So yeah, do you I just have it? Found it? She looks amazing. Got it? Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. So did you get it, Tina? Yes. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So okay, yeah. Anne, so you got a question. Are you talking Anne? to me? No. Anne? Annie Mac, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um uh, I, I really appreciate you know you taking the time to show us and to talk about this and and Wendy and I are photographers so we we look at these things and we're drawing lots of of uh, inspiration from this even though this isn't really our medium which is great and but one thing I was kind of curious about is that you know a, a painter uh, particularly draws from the core of self and a lot of self experiences and the self expression. And um, and yet I see you have a lot of range in in kind of the the, the um, content and and themes and things. Um, how do you maintain like a range of that so that you know that if you're working just from self, I'm wondering, do you end up kind of a lot of common themes for a while, and how do you kind of maybe break away from being you know too too uh, monolithic in a way you know it's one thing or it's because it's from you does it you know does it kind of stay within certain uh you know boundaries and, and how do you kind of move yourself around you know uh so not to be so to stay original hmm. uh i'm not sure how to answer that <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, are you, t are you, um, are you asking me of how I manage the different ranges of what I'm doing? Um, like the good that I'm not doing just one particular type of work. Um, yeah. I'm thinking, you know, how do you keep it fresh? Where, whereas like, you know, when, when people are working in a medium, you know, you begin to see, you know, similar patterns, a lot and then how do you kind of you know break from that to keep it fresh that it yeah you don't get stuck in in one sort of themey thing or or one you know uh uh content or one you know what i mean the oneness or the or the selfness of it that it you know you can be more more things and not just kind of right right so that is problem. i i do make a conscious effort there to not paint the same types of things. Uh, you know, I, I know there are schools of thought about, um, you know, to, if you want your work to be recognized, it should be a certain right. uh, brand almost. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, getting back to what I said earlier for me right now, uh, anyway, is I, um, I don't want any boundaries. You know, I, if I want to paint, um, you know, I wouldn't, but if I wanted to paint a cow, um, then I want to paint a cow, you know? So I just want to, I want to be able to experiment, you know, however I want to do, uh, whatever I want to do. I, you know, I'm playing around with some, some other things right now, like concrete. Um, I, you know, added ashes and sand and coffee and things like that to my cold wax to see what would happen. Um, you know, and I just want to paint what I want to paint. Uh, so I, you know, I, that's just um, how I want to proceed right now. And I do know that, um, you know, maybe it, maybe my work is, doesn't, isn't so cohesive because it doesn't all kind of look the same. Uh, I hope it doesn't look like more than one artist did it. I, I hope that, I feel like I have a style is what I'm trying to say. I feel like there is some continuity in my work. I feel like you can say, you can look at pieces and say, oh, those all, you know, kind of look like Lynn did them. You know, I don't feel like they're so far out that I look, it's like five artists were in the room, <laughs> but, um, you know, um, but I don't really want to concentrate on painting any one thing. I, I want to be able to experiment and, and just uh, paint whatever I like. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, Paul, I think we have time for one more question. So Paul, go ahead. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm sitting kind of in the dark here. I'm in <laughs> Japan, it's the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> I'm still struggling to stay awake. Um, and uh, sorry, Lynn, uh, I'm very tired. Um, thank oh, you so much for you, sharing Paul. your, uh, hello, sorry. Um, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. Um, sure. I've just got a couple of notes here to keep myself on track. Um, I really admire your dedication and commitment um, and authenticity. And actually, one of the things I love about your work is the uh, the great deal of variety in it. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, I, I get bored and I'm frustrated and surprised by some people who do something. They do the same thing again and again and again. I, I, I really like that about your work. Thank um, you. And like Annie was saying, and um, similar to the photography of Wendy and Alan as well, um, Lots of your paintings remind me of some of the found art, found photography that we find in the city, um, that they're scratched, they're scrapes. Some of them look mm -hmm. like they've been burned. Um, I love the layers, the damaged quality of it. And that one that you called aggregate, you know, which mm -hmm. was like concrete, mm -hmm. it just, I, I would dream of chancing upon something like that in the city. Oh, it's just, just it's gorgeous. very nice. Thank you, Paul. Um, I really love the, the aesthetic of your work. Um, my question was um, about the social consciousness of your art, um, which really intrigued me because many people, you know, that's a criticism of, of abstract art, that it's it's art for art's sake, or you're only interested in, you know, the materials, or it's, it's, it's beauty without any truth there. But um, I can see there is uh, an emotional depth, um, an intellectual depth to your work. And maybe this is an impossible question because I appreciate the unconscious nature of your mm -hmm. concerns. The fact that it may be uh, a motivation or intention, which is very much under the surface, mm -hmm. but <laughs> mm -hmm. I would still like to ask you maybe to give us um, an example or just some kind of um, idea or notion of how you feel that some of those concerns about feminism, about the environment, or some traumas that may have, um, you may have experienced, you know, you mentioned cancer as well. How mm. do they manifest in, in your paintings? How, how are they revealed or, or represented? E even though it may not be explicit, uh, and you're not trying to, you know, do that, mm -hmm. how do you see it? Because, because you said that you can see it. Mm -hmm, so I, mm -hmm. I'd really like to know your thoughts about that. That, that really mm -hmm. intrigued me. Um, how do I see it? Uh, you know, they're just, I, I, it's hard to explain, but they're obvious to me, you know, when I, um, 
So I just, I'll name a few paintings that, uh, you know, if you wanted to go back and look on my website or something. So oh, okay, there's a, you. there's a painting uh, that I did called Time Bomb. Uh, and, you know, if you look at the painting, uh, you know, just the way, you know, it's the, the composition of it, uh, you know, for me is it, when it was finished, it was, I knew it was an environmental piece for me. I, I don't know that anybody else would, would think that, and that's fine. Mm. Um, I don't want to lead the viewer. I want, I want a viewer to like have their own relationship with my painting and to have their own story. And for, you know, I want it to make them feel however, whatever they get out of that painting for the, mm -hmm. themselves. But for me, that painting is very much about the uh, environment. And there's another uh, painting that I did. Uh, uh, it's called Fragility. Uh, that's Time Bomb. Uh, yes. Oh, no. So, I mean, just uh, I, to me, it's a composition and the falling, you know, falling down of the, you know, the, the paint uh, coming into that uh, second layer. Uh, you know, the shifting of that upper um, right mm -hmm. corner, uh, you know, that's just how I read it. Um, and maybe it's just because I worry about our environment, you know, so that's just something that I carry around with me that I am concerned about uh, what's happening to our planet. So, uh, and the same thing with, uh, you know, I'm thinking about fragility right now. That's, you know, definitely a piece about cancer. I did that piece. Actually, my husband was diagnosed with cancer two years ago. Um, and so that was a piece that came out right around that time. So I, and, and to me, I look at it and I know, I just knew, you know, that was me mm. purging my concerns about his health. Mm. Um, uh, trying uh, The mental health pieces, I don't think I put on my website. I actually did those. And then um, one I donated to uh, uh, a mental health uh, organization here in town. And I have one here in my studio. So, um, and those I did, and I just, I knew, it just knew like, that's again, it's, that's about mental health. So I, it's, you know, it's a hard thing to, for me to explain. I, it's just something that's come is within, you know, I just know. Um, and, um, you know, not every painting I do, I would, I wouldn't say every one of them has some sort of unsaid message or subject matter. It's just that I, I do have quite a few that do. So mm -hmm. there's, they're coming out and I, um, you know, I have some that I think are just, um, you know, more fun than others. You know, I do have fun. It's, you know, it's <laughs> I can fun see to that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's just, you know, different sides of my personality. Like all of us yeah. were very, we're complex people. Um, and so that's just part of, part of what I do when I work. It's not all of what I do, but part of. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. It's so interesting to hear about how you read, how you interpret a painting. Um, and I appreciate the the freedom that you give to the viewer as well, which I think is essential. Right, I do too. And I do not, I'm just sharing with you that that's, I'm sharing with you today, my personal, mm -hmm. um, my personal life with my paintings. I do not want a viewer to look at a, a painting and, and feel like I've, I've told them what they need to see. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, I don't want to do that at all. On the contrary, I want them to see what they see. And I find that fascinating, <laughs> you know, to when I hear when somebody tells yes. me what they see in a painting and I think, wow, you know, that's, that's just really cool that you see that. <laughs> so. And I think it's um, maybe tantamount to your creativity that even though you give them such strong titles, which I, I really, um, they made me smile when you were saying them, they make a lot of sense to me. Um, they don't interfere with the viewer's interpretation. Um, they're, 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 they're still open to, to anybody's understanding. So with but, the title, uh, thank you so much for your honesty. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, it's it's a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thanks for staying up or or getting up or whatever you had to do there. Thank you I, for I being I don't know here. what I'm doing now, but yeah, I'm awake. I think. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you are. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Tina, you have one last quick question. 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to see, I, I think I understand what you mean. I'm following up on Paul. So it's like, it's the feeling you get when you look at your painting when it's done. And the feeling you get is based on like the types of marks, the type of color or value or that's it, right? What makes you feel like this is about a certain thing? Right. Like I'll use Time Bomb as an example. I didn't set out to do, yeah, I didn't just think, oh, I want to do a piece about in, uh, the environment because I'm worried about it today. Um, but I worry about it. And yeah. so it's something I carry around with me. And so when I did that piece, I just, I immediately thought that's, that came from my concern about the environment. Yeah. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Lynn, do you have any closing remarks you want to make? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe um, just uh, to just to sort of reiterate um, uh, th the reason why I did this talk, you know, is was really um, to help anybody out there that might be struggling the way with the kinds of things that I have struggled with, and so. You know, I just want to be like that cheerleader for anybody out there that thinks it's, they're too old or it's too late or they, you know, they, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, they're, they're just uh, bogged down and they can't like figure out what they want to do next with painting. I, for me, I just, it's been doing the work. Um, it's just ongoing. I, so I would, you know, to answer the question, how did I do what I've done in six years? I, it's been hard work. I mean, I really, I really work at what I do and I, I love it, but it is work. And I would say that in my opinion, um, it's not uh, that I uh, had talent. Uh, it's that I had um, desire, you know, I have the desire and that's what has given me the drive. And I feel like for me that the talent, if you will, if you want to call it that, that has come with the efforts. And so, you know, I had to like, you know, the desire has to be there because you have to be, you have to be willing to put in the hours and the work and, and keep going and push through the fear. So, so that's, that's my closing statement. Lynn, thank you so much. I mean, this was inspiring for me and it, they've all, all of these talks have been rewarding, but I really appreciate getting a glimpse into your creative process and who you are as an artist. So thank you so much for stepping up and sharing yourself with us. Oh, thank you, Alan. Thank you for asking me. And, um, you know, I'm sorry I was so nervous. I'm still nervous right this minute, um, but, you know, I did it. <laughs> you we we know, told it wouldn't it be my, so hard. We I did it that. for my art, which is, you know, I. I don't mind being uncomfortable to um, to move my art along and to move myself along as a, as an artist. And so, you know, now that I've gone over this hump, maybe next time won't be quite so excruciatingly <laughs> hard to do. So thank you. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, great. Thank you. And thanks everyone for joining us. It was great. Yes. Thank, thank you, so everyone. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It was great. Thank you.